Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk Fishing with No Limits. That means I'll ask anything. This week's episode, we got Mr. Tom Wynn himself coming on here to tell you a little bit about Tom. Tom himself. What makes Tom Tom? Where did Tom come from? What got Tom diving into this walleye world? Tom placed second in the 2021 NWT Championship out of Ottertail. Um, if you've been following along any National Walleye Tour stuff, you know Tom is a forward-facing sonar guru. This guy is excellent on it. He's made a few appearances on the Next Bite TV show. He knows his stuff. Tom was uh, did a lot of bass fishing previously. You know, we want to know what got Tom to kind of, you know, dip his toes into this walleye world and uh, a little bit more about Tom. So he's got some tips and tricks up his sleeve. Hopefully he'll share those with us. So stay tuned to learn a little bit about Mr. Tom Wynn himself. Hey folks, welcome to this episode of Real Talk Fishing, where there's no limits, man. And that means anything and everything goes. So uh, we're going to get right into this one. I am here with the man that you all know as Tom with the win, right? That's that's what he does. He's a 2021 uh, NWT, got second place in that championship, mm -hmm. uh, an aim uh championship win underneath his belt i believe aim team of the year uh several firsts and, and just a lot of top 10 finishes in the aim trail out in minnesota so folks further ado here is mr tom win himself how you doing buddy pretty good how are you doing i am good it is cold and we're getting uh more snow today over here aren't you getting it over there in minnesota really i mean it's missed it, we're getting it around, but I mean, we, we've missed a lot of the snow. It's cold though. It is cold. <laughs> it's freezing cold. I have a, I was going to go ice fishing this week. Uh, no, thanks, man. I'm just not, I don't have a, <laughs> a, a snow bear. So not, not that interesting. I didn't know we were going to get more sm snow today, but I just came back from the gym and I bet Adam had another inch or two out there. Um, yeah. Real light, fluffy, you know, maybe hit the, uh, the snowboard and later at night or something like that but yeah. it is cold it's been frigid cold and you're over in minnesota right tom like east yeah. fargo or something area yeah yeah just a little a little bit outside fargo and uh uh spent a lot of time uh between there and up by my aim team partner nate's place you know but up and he, he lives up by walker but okay yeah but we're i mean this cold is good for the for the hardcore ice guys that's for sure you don't ice fish, do you? No, I haven't. No. I haven't you know, here and I'll, I'll probably go. I got um, some of the Northland guys have been giving me a yeah. hard time, you know, like uh, uh, Rose Doll and them trying to yep. get me out there. And I told them when it hits 60, 70 degrees, holler at me. I'll go ice fishing. Right on. <laughs> I, just, I like to wait till there's like eight plus inches of ice. All those guys are so I eager know. to get out there. It's two to three inches and they're running out there and i mean we've heard of all the you know the tragic stories mm -hmm. already this year and the red river having all those incidents up there or on red lake excuse me and yeah. it's just uh no thanks but i think we got good good ice now i prefer to go yeah. on the river um some of that down in, in lake yankton and lewis clark should be good to go by next week uh so we're gonna get out and give it a little little shot you're obviously in just a, a phenomenal place where you know, Devil's Lake, North Dakota isn't too far away. You got all the Minnesota lakes. I mean, you are in the ice fishing haven. So yep. might be something you want to dig into a little bit. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, it's a, not like you need it, but it's a great place to practice that live scoping. Mm -hmm. It is. Right. It you is. Know, it's, and, and every lake is different. So that's that's the that's the best part. You know, when I first started dialing in uh, live scope back in 2020, I was under the false impression that, Oh, I can take this anywhere and do the same exact thing. That's wrong. Um, it, yes, it is. <laughs> and like I thought, oh, I can go to Lake Erie and do this. No, not even close. Like I, every single lake is different, and I'm learning that, and I'm learning. I'm I'm starting to piece together why. And then so when I go to these different systems, I know exactly what I'm looking at. But you're right. You so you in Minnesota. There's so many lakes that you can hit, and you're learning something different on each 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 individual one so yeah that live scope stuff is uh is something else we're gonna definitely dig into that because you are a live scope guru you've made some appearances on the next bike showing us all how how tom gets it done and uh we want to definitely get to that but i know you yeah, from the trail and having some talks with you we don't obviously get to sit down and chit chat and have dinner and have yeah. you know a lot of the stuff you know chats we'd like to have unless you know that's what our travel partners are for mm -hmm. it's uh mm -hmm. it's your you know it's a grind it's you know our heads are down our noses are down we're, we're working 
day and night. We don't have a lot of time for outside. It, it's it's work. So if yeah. you didn't, people don't realize that it is work and it's, it's sun up to sundown. Yeah. I see you out there. I'm no different. We'll lay down. We take a nap in the midday sometimes. <laughs> Uh, you know, we take a break just to have a, a little bite to refocus sometimes. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see Tom out there in the water pre-fishing and you want to talk about being locked into that screen. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see. First time I saw he was out in Chamberlain and I'm like, who is that guy fishing over here who hasn't lifted his head up in days? Yes. And he's, and you're fishing the uh, Crow Creek flat area. Mm-hmm. And, and I obviously have a lot of experience there. And I was like, man, that, if that guy had any idea how many fish he's going by, because yeah. he's chasing one, he's chasing yeah. one, just, just drop that yeah. lure down. Mm-hmm. But obviously you were, you were catching fish and it's a target rich environment. So it made it yeah. fun. But I was like, what is he doing? And then, you know, yeah. he comes in that year and kind of cleans up on a lot of us. I'm like, I, I better get my face down on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a program. Yeah. So, so we, we know that we're going to get into some of that, but what's Tom, you know, what, who is Tom? What, what makes Tom click? Where's he come from? What's your background? Let our listeners kind of know, uh, you know, what, how did you dive into this walleye world? You used to bass fish a lot, as I understand it, right? Yeah. I mean, I bass fished, um, uh, starting fishing. I fished on, as a lot of you know, on, um, the Arkansas pond banks. That, that's where I grew up. My grandpa had a small hundred acre cattle farm and, um, he had some ponds built out there and, um, just with bluegill catfish, large mouth. And, you know, they wouldn't get giant just because the ponds restricted their growth, but um, that's what I did. And um, back in the hills there, we didn't get very many channels. And the channels we got uh, we were, you know, local uh, news affiliates and stuff. But in the mornings, they'd have, they'd have fishing on TV, you know, bass fishing, of course. Um, and it was something I always wanted to do, you know. And But obviously, like, I once I realized how expensive it was, I was like, maybe not. You know, I was like, <laughs> you know, it's always professional sport where you actually don't get paid. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, um, I, you know, and, and not ever having any, you know, like my dad, um, immigrant from Vietnam, um, came over here and worked his butt off so we could do what we're doing now. My mom, you know, uh, born and raised in Arkansas, she's still down there. But didn't come for money by any means, and uh, we didn't have a, I, we I didn't have, there was no boat, little boat or anything on the ponds, and I didn't get my first boat until I was, it was probably like eight years ago probably I was thirty some years old and I um, decided to jump in, uh, you know I, you know, had my businesses I I moved up here for college to Minnesota from Arkansas and uh was in college and i um stumbled into the fingernail industry of all things and i started <laughs> I, I um did it originally you know to help this family out uh that helped me a lot i they were needing help and stuff and i agreed to do it but i was like i'm not telling my friends in arkansas <laughs> what i'm doing i mean <laughs> you know but it ended up being like a really um that was just me being narrow minded back then and like the coming from small town and all that. But now it's like, uh, it, it only took like six months of doing it to be like, I don't care who who knows what I love my job. Um, there's money to be made in the industry. And uh, so after working like 15 years in that industry, I was like, you know what? I don't, I, I've been saving my money. I'm going to buy a boat. So I bought a, uh, nitro 17 foot aluminum boat brand new one um not that long ago and i'd never been in a boat before that and uh i took it to the nearest lake out out by detroit lakes and put it in and uh, put the drain plug in the wrong hole <laughs> right away go out there for a little bit water starts coming up the little vent thing on the floor oh yeah, yeah. not doing that i put it in and then start panicking i got it out of the water and everything so everything I contribute a lot of what I'm doing to just jumping in, like just literally. <laughs> um, I I work for it. I use my own money, my own time. Nobody taught me anything, <laughs> and I'm jumping into it head first and learning on the fly. And 
Um, that goes from getting the first boat to jumping in a tournament. I didn't fish any local live bass tournaments or anything like that. I, I actually tried. There's some bass tours around the Fargo area, the uh, local ones, that I tried to reach out to the tournament directors for them. They never responded to me ever. So I was like, all right, I'll... So why not jump into the Bassmaster Opens? <laughs> right. Let's just go all in, man. Let's go for the big ones. Yeah. So I did that for a few years. And, um, you know, I, you know, I you try to try to say this a lot. I try to make a point to let people know, too, that it's never it's never too late to pursue this dream if it's something you wanted to do. Um, right. And if you've got the means to do it, do it. It doesn't mean you have to keep doing it. Give it a year. Give it a tournament. And, um, and just see where things fall. And some people aren't, aren't cut out for it. You know, some people aren't oh, yeah. cut out for making those decisions, being the boater, being the pro in the boat. Um, there's a lot more that people don't realize stress wise and mental, mentally that they're not prepared for. Um, but, uh, that's going, so just diving straight in, whether it's, you know, me getting that first boat and putting it on the lake for the first time, or what, even when you when you go into live scope, same thing. Like I, I bought it, but I was I didn't want I didn't really want to. My one of my buddies was like telling me get it, get it, get it, and this is for bass, you know. And I bought it, and when I did, I told myself, look, I'm not gonna take my eyes off this till I figure it out. I spent this much money on it, you know, how many fingernails. Right. I ate? That, that's a lot so i um did that and fortunately and unfortunately uh covid comes and we are my nail salons had to be shut down for a certain amount of weeks and during that time i was nervous i'm like where am i gonna pay rent where it's gonna happen you know like holy crap you know and so but that time where i was able to go relieve stress was on the water i just bought live scope so I literally spent that time dialing it in, like just constantly dialing it in. Like you said, head down, like looking at everything, casting at everything and doing that. And then just fell into that first aim tournament where, I mean, here's, it's, it's, it's just crazy how things work out. Like, you know, um, I was struggling. The songs were struggling paying rent at the time because of COVID. Um, and I went and entered this tournament. The Leech Lake AIM tournament is always full. Always. It fills up all the time. Right. And I heard there was a ter professional tournament. I thought it was in the impression it was a bass tournament coming to Leech, but I knew better because I followed the bass circuit. You're going to tell me you jumped in a walleye tournament thinking you were going bass fishing? Well, I thought it was a bass fishing tournament first, but when I, when I did the research and Googled, 2020 uh, uh, fishing tournament, Leech Lake, uh, it came up as AIM walleye series. There you go, folks. It was an all complete accident that Tom's over here in the walleye world completed out. So. Yeah, it, it really was. And that's how crazy things work. And so I went and uh, first I was like, I ain't going to enter that, you know. And then I, I just met my, I just met Nate Wolski. Um, and him and I hit it off real quick, and I we were sitting by a campfire, and I said, Nate, you want know, to jump in this tournament with me? He goes, what tournament? I said, there's a walleye tournament coming to Leech Lake next week or whatever it was. And he's like, why? <laughs> like, just for fun. Let's just see what can... Yeah. And, I, and I'm on my bass boat at the time, and we did it. We won that tournament. It was a $7,000 prize, plus I had the nitro contingency, which, I you know, at the time. so. It's just crazy how things work because, you know, we we won that. I was able to offset some costs at home with, you know, the salons. And with that, it helped. And so then literally it was by chance. It was by, you know, things just leading me, pointing me in the right direction there. And um, there happened to be literally one opening left in that tournament. And I got it. And that, it's history. Then after that, I. Uh, entered the second aim um, that same year. I couldn't qualify for anything because I didn't get to fish all of them. Um, right, they were already passed. Got a fourth place in that, and then 
that was it for AIM. And then Nate calls me one night and says, hey, Tom, there's a big, bigger tournament coming to Cass Lake in September. I said, next year? He goes, no, here in a couple of weeks. It's the Masters Wildlife Circuit. Um, they're coming to Cass, and they go up there every year, apparently. And I so, fished that once. Yeah, we jumped, we jumped in that. And um, basically, I told Nate, I said, yeah, it's a $1,000 entry fee. It's kind of steep, but let's let's try it because we have to see if we're actually onto something here. We weren't even convinced that we were really. So you got um, in with all the contingencies, side pots, yeah. big fish. Yep. That's yep. what MWC is 650 a team, I believe, then 250 for sides and big fish. Yeah, and, okay. I mean, 1000 no, bucks. It's 1000 even now. So, yeah. All right. So then um, we got in there. We won that tournament and set the lake record at the time. Um, but, and that was it. Then. It, 2021 just went all in so you know there's always some luck involved in fishing with tom but from your story it, it's it's not by chance you worked your butt off and you got you know you, no. you earned it um yeah you know and everybody from the outside looking in is thinking oh these guys are lucky they stumbled on the stuff but i've heard that story of getting into the tournament circuit by so many, I think Max Wilson won his first tournament he ever heard. Same deal. Let me just go out and jump in. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Bell did the same thing. You know, his story is, let me take some money out of savings. I can do this, but if I ever have to touch any other funds, I'm done. Goes in, mm -hmm. bam, wins his first tournament. Yep. Um, I don't have that story. I did not win my mm -hmm. first tournament. Um, <laughs> I've hardly ever won any, uh, you know, but we definitely cash some checks, but that, yeah. but that's a great way. And obviously that's, you know, someone above saying, you know, this guy's meant to be here. Let's, let's get him set on the right path. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I and it's hard time for me to like it's been a little bit hard for me to accept that or like understand <laughs> like just that I'm where I'm at in the fishing industry right now. It's like I have to stop and remember, you know, like it was just a few short years ago that it was like a dream, you know, and now that it's happening it's like I don't want to take anything for granted. So any any of these companies who trust me um to uh make to help design things, whether it's rods, um, baits, anything like that, I'm going to give them 150% because, again, I'm not one of the young kids getting into this. And, you know, even on the National Wally Tour, now we're seeing a lot of younger um, younger guys and ladies getting into this. You're you know, On the bass side, you're seeing a lot of young guys. And that's where a lot of marketing is happening right now with yep. young people and their social medias and stuff. And um, to be able to try to compete with that, as I'm a little older, um, tell you know, me about it. it. Yeah. And, and, but, but it's a challenge and it's just a challenge that I've accepted and I'm just trying to keep that ball rolling and, um, try to also, you know, give back where we can, like teaching people how we, what we're looking at on these electronics, what, you know, what, what we're doing out there, what we're thinking. Um, so, yeah, it's been an awesome ride, and you know, it's never too late for for anybody who wants to try to do it. It's, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a lot of work, a lot more than most people think. And like you said, not everybody's cut out for it. But I mean, our tournament trail, the National Walleye Tours, you know, got a great format with the co anglers. So that mm -hmm. gives you, I mean, an opportunity to get in and just learn. Get in my yep. boat, get in Tom's boat, get in Springle's boat, Hoyers, Chases. You get to get in these pros' boats. Have been doing this stuff for a long time. I mean. I mean, I want to be the fly on the wall. I, I never did the co-angler thing. I had a, a good buddy who fished trail, Brett Hendrickson, who came to a seminar and I reached out to him and said, Hey man, I want to, I want to do the co-angler. We used to be able to pick a co and they mm -hmm. would travel with you. Mm -hmm. And he came and I didn't, you know, he sat in the crowd, didn't know it. He came up to me at break. He said, Hey, I'm Brent. You're not fishing as a co. I'm like, what, who are you to tell me? I'm not a fish co angler. He's like, uh, uh, you're going all in on pro. Um, Brent's a great guy, super humble. He's a surgeon. You know, we'll figure it out. You know, I'm like, I can't afford to, to do this. This is not cheap. And I think entry fees are 1500 back then. And uh, it's like, just we'll figure it out. You know, so it was Brent and I and Ted Takasaki and Randy Hummel. I'm like, wow, what a what a great opportunity to go to fish with these guys. I've been doing this forever mm -hmm. on, the, on the pro side. I did horrible on my first year. I'm like, I didn't get second to championship. I think I averaged 120th the whole season. <laughs> you know, never go into these bodies of waters. But, man, talk about just absorbing it. Mm -hmm. um, a year as a co-angler would have probably been super beneficial, yeah. uh, but come the next year, they could finish 24th or something in AOI mm -hmm. race at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, 
that that fast right and you can learn so much yep. and it's yep. just from being around you know the guys on the on the trail they're all great people talking to them you know during tournament after tournament watching them back on the videos watching them on the water yep. you know being observant to what's happening um mm-hmm. you just you know feet first you kind of went head first from the bass world you grew up you know about the same time i did it sounds like watching tnn on mm-hmm. saturday morning instead of cartoons because you wanted to watch parker yep. and bill dance right and all That's those guys good. Where, yeah. where are you at in Arkansas? I didn't I had no idea you were from uh, down two south. Hour, two hours north of Little Rock, so like almost like the foothills of the Ozarks, right where the Ozarks start. Kind of. Yeah, White Bates, River, Batesville, Arkansas. Bates, the White River runs right through Batesville. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I got a friend down at Table Rock. I spent a little bit of time down there, and mm-hmm. beautiful place. Uh, my wife it actually is. took a, a mobile or some type of tourism project she did down there camping and she's the same thing she was mm-hmm. like wow man arkansas is kind of kind of neat i think she yeah. was outside of fayetteville but yeah you know Bentonville area so my a lot of my family all, all my family still live down there so. you're a southerner you got no accent yeah. <laughs> you put me down there for about 10 minutes <laughs> you know, right back you'll have to put subtitles at the bottom <laughs> no you haven't been up north long enough because you ain't got one of those neither so <laughs> But no, you're right. You know, those call angler, if anybody's thinking and you're not sure the pro thing's right for you, jump in as a co-angler. I've met a lot of good co-anglers and, you know, um, you know, like with uh, my first year met, meeting Sean Grams and he was co-angler and then went to the pro side. Josh Jones, some of those guys I think of that are making that, you know, it, it, it's good to like mentor some of these guys. Yeah. It is. It's fun. And to... Uh, to, while they make that leap into the pro side and then you've got your co-anglers that have been do, being a co-angler side for many years and then you're like it's cool when they get in your boat you know you're like oh they know what they're doing <laughs> you know, so. yeah they, uh, you, the expectations are set right yep. they, they kind of yep. know this guy's that way and then sometimes awesome. i mean i've had the same co-angler two or three times okay. um, yeah I mean, we all have our opinion on the co-angler thing, and it's never nothing against the co-anglers themselves. It's just the whole system, right, and how this thing works. Mm-hmm. Um, so on that note, how, how was your year? How did you think 2023 on the trail went? And then we're looking forward to 24 schedule. Yeah, so 23, I, I didn't have any wins on AIM or NWT, but I had a lot of second places this year. I had – uh, two second places, a third place, and a fourth place on AIM. And we can see the hardware behind you. I think, uh, you know, some of those guys at AIM are like, it's okay, Tom. It's okay. <laughs> if you step aside a little bit, let us have a little piece of this pie. But well, they clearly well, brought home plenty of it. This is this is, this is is 2024 as I haven't hung up. <laughs> You're running out of room. 23. 23. <laughs> but, no, I uh, just... We had, with no no wins and on the NWT, two top, two top tens, uh, a, a second place in their Winnebago, which that was a tournament that I was probably dreading the most this year. Um, but then oh, yeah. just head down and like literally again just put that together. And but um, twenty twenty three was my best season, even though I didn't have a win um, that I've had because I was more consistent i uh since i've started i haven't fished on a team uh with anybody so whenever i go i you just have to break this down by myself but then again that's making me learn i think on an exponential level i just go out there first thing in the morning i stay out all day long and i'm just dissecting anything that i think looks good i break take a section of the lake or river and knowing there has to be fish there figure out how to find them and how to catch them um and every place is different so um 2023 well i finished fourth um me me and dylan newsbaum finished tied for team or angler of the year points um this year Uh, so i think i got fourth on that and which i'm i'm not complaining about it's it's awesome (laughs) that's great i mean it's unfortunate that if you're not first, you literally are last in Angler of the Year because it all pays the same. Yep. But that that is no small feat by all means. You know? Yeah, just trying to stay, just trying to stay up there, and that's that's my goal one of these days to crack that uh, top spot there. But um, and so 
again, coming going into next year, um, it's a lot of water that I have not been on or done, not done well on. Like Erie, for example, I've been there. Um, there's very few places I've been. I've been there in 2021. Nate and I were like, let's go to this walleye factory they speak of over there. And we go over there and I try to use, I try using LifeScope the way I've used it. I'm like, is it going to be, and, and like we just, we just talked about. Oh, let's right. Uh, no, um, it worked it that way. It was so, it's the weirdest thing. I'm hoping that between 2021 and next year, I've learned enough that I'm able to go figure something out there. Um, but no, it, it's just the oddest thing. You see fish like crazy, but you have to, they're constantly moving because Lake Erie has so many different currents going through it. Yeah. Um, so many different directions that by the time you cast a bait to a fish that bait's going this way the fish is going that way or back and forth so it it just it's a bit was a big learning curve and um Sakakawea we have next year i've never been yeah. there oh you're gonna love it i just My hear favorite the, lake <laughs> My favorite lake oh yeah why is that uh, i fished i think six tournaments there now and i've cast checks in five nice um, okay it is well, that would be target a- rich environment. Okay. It is a river, which I know how much you love rivers. Yeah. All right. Well, I do it, on the other. <laughs> it, it, it's more like instead, more like uh, Chamberlain stuff, right? As far as the water flow, like the reservoir type system. Yeah, more. Yeah, a little bit more like a Wahe. Have you have you fished on a Wahe yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a lot bigger. So not Mississippi or anything like that where the current's ripping through. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little slower and a little more obviously lake like, but those fish are still, they're still moving. They're not just mm-hmm. sitting by that rock all day. It's not, it's not an inland water, um, by yeah. all means, but there's a, there's big fish. There's a lot of fish and you can catch them any way you want, wherever you want. Okay. And I, and then we got green Bay, uh, which I'm happy with going there again. Um, I didn't, do so well the first time we went i didn't zero i caught one fish that kept me in the running on 20 in 2021 that's but all you need sometimes struggled there because of that weather was that uh, was that their blow days yeah the one day tournament yeah that was fun mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. i know i was uh last minute i was first boat in so, <laughs> but i got fish so well, there you I, go but I, yeah. I went right across the lake to the river. My trolling motor broke on the way. So once I got there, I went to drop drop it down. It had shattered into pieces, but I was able to put a couple pins in, hold on spotlight, spot lock. We jigged up uh, six walleyes, nothing, you know, like eight pounds. And yeah. turned around and went right back in because I couldn't yeah. do nothing without trolling motor. And yeah. I, that's the whole point was not to zero. It was just to get a fish and get points. We was going to go there, mm-hmm. catch one, and then go pull some spinners on weeds. But it just... Yeah. Wasn't working, but it was the right choice because it made the championship yeah. to get to Ottertail yep, because exactly of it. Exactly. Yep. And I got that tournament. I found one spot. Um, and I'm like, oh gosh, that place! You look at it on a map, and you're like, oh, yeah, oh I'm yeah. gonna hit here, hit here, hit here. You get there, and you're like, oh, it's so huge. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's a half a day there. I got to put the boat on the trailer, drive twenty, thirty miles, put it in yeah. down here or yeah. other side. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh... I found a spot there and i could, i thought i could catch over 40 pounds a day and um i go there the first day of tournament and the water temp had cooled by a drastic amount i still caught one and it was you know it was a 10 pounder thank goodness yep. but um that that was it and, but we went there again was it 2022 i think 2022 and uh, i made a top 10 so different situation different area of the lake but started to piece things together so i'm looking forward to going back to just expand on what i found there last it is a it's a good fishery those fish up north like you know you're talking about are they're big they're fun Mm -hmm. um i have a serious love-hate relationship with that place i've never done good um never have even had i've had some decent pre-fishes there and i've caught some of those fish up north but it's your it's such a, a drive to get there uh that mm-hmm. last 2021 20, was i think everybody's going to go there and go for those and i don't think there's mm-hmm. enough to go around so mm-hmm. i decided to go ahead and get one in the river and then try to you know i thought we had we were pretty confident in like a 25 pound bag pulling spinners and weeds 
but I couldn't do that with my trolling motor in the four or five foot waves that I was in. Uh, but it, uh, yeah. And you know, there's a lot of talk going around the guys about going there in June with the L wife, you know, or, or dying off or spawning, whatever it is at that time. And everybody thinks that's mm-hmm. just a real bad time to go to green yeah. Bay. I don't well, that that's this year. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. But that, that was what was happening when we were there last time. Right. And the L wife deal. And that's, you know, a tough bite to tough bite for everybody. Yeah. So I yeah. personally don't, it, it can, it takes some of the fun out of the practice because you're, you're just struggling and you're in your head, right? Am I the only guy that just sucks right now? Or is everybody <laughs> sucking? Right. Yeah. And you hope everybody's sucking. Yeah. But then when you get on something, you're like, Hey, you know, that's kind of how I felt at spring Valley last year. And I'm, I'm sure everybody was like, man, cause the weather was all over the place. It was miserable, right? Mm-hmm. Practice. I mean, hey, I have my boat slid off the damn trailer in a parking lot on the ice. Did and it? you're just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. lucky in the, and the skag got hit the bump, uh, the curb. Oh, and so it God. kept it about two yeah. inches from coming all the way off the trailer or hitting the pavement. And four guys just threw it back on while I winched it quick. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next day I smoked a log at 55 mile an hour down river. Oh, Didn't hurt it though. Put the, oh, yeah? yeah, the lower unit, the nose of the cone, uh-huh. you know, it's like this. Yeah. It was not, it was inverted. Uh-huh. Yeah. Still ran perfectly fine. Still ran. Okay. Yeah. Still ran <laughs> perfectly fine. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you're like, I don't know if this is good or it, it's just such a head game. I mean, there's, I yeah. think you can attest that as tournament fishing is more, you know, mental. And mm-hmm. like you said, we got a lot of young guys coming up. Um, it used to just be trolling. It was sitting down trolling, you know, out of, and there's still plenty of us older guys. I'm probably categorizing that older, older guy now in the mid forties and, and I, I can troll, you know, with them and, and when I need to, but I want a rod in hand too. Yeah. You know, I don't want to stare at my screen so much. I want to look up and enjoy what I, everything around me, mm-hmm. but it sure is fun watching them fish swim around down there. Yeah, I know it is. All right. And, um, what else do we have? Mississippi river. We got the Mississippi is uh, first stop. Yep. May, no, second, second stop. Yeah. yeah. Erie in April, uh, Red Wing in May, Green Bay yeah. in June, Skakui mm-hmm. in August. Very yep. first, end of July, first week of August. Yeah. And then going to Huron, right? Huron Championship. Yep. Up out Alpena area. So that'd be interesting. Yeah. I have no idea. Again, Many. I have no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. No idea. It's going to be some big fish living there, of course. And I think they tried to mix the schedule up this year to have a little bit of those, you know, trolling type tournaments mm-hmm. mixed in. Last year really laid out well for for you and Eric and the guys that, I mean, it, it just showed here's our top 10 live scoping guys on the circuit. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Okay. They, these guys, you and, and John and Dewey and, and Eric and uh, you know, Max and Isaac, these, they, you guys got it dialed in. You got it down. You're all using Lawrence's and Garmin's. I believe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it showed, I mean, you guys were up, up there and, you know, the, and yeah. we had really good weather. We had pretty calm conditions for the most part in every tournament was, which made up for the previous two years. Cause it's horrible. We, yeah. Um, I think I did the math once and 30% of all of our tournaments had a blow day until last year. We just, year, everything yeah. fell, fell good. We had good fisheries, good bites. Uh, hopefully we get that again. Cause last thing we need on Erie and stuff is a, is a yeah. lot of wind. Yeah. So. <laughs> And I, I'm ready to, for Erie. I I just bought my first uh, trolling rods and reels from Daiwa. <laughs> I just I just ordered them, so I, I'm ready just in case I can't come up with something. And I, I I think it's a like I said. I think we're like a lot of live scopers are going to be in for a surprise when they go there, and it's not going to be what they actually think. I, that's my opinion. I'm hoping right. to find I mean, something. It's, it's it's a whole different beast that time of year over there. It I'm is, but I mean, I, I, I talked to some other guys about this too, and, and we all came to the conclusion that you guys will figure it out. You live scopers will so. you'll figure <laughs> it out. The difference is trolling the crankbaits. Obviously, it works well over there, and mm-hmm. we can. I'm going to have you know, not necessarily me. I'm I'm going to try to live scope as much as possible as well. I mean, I love to have the rod in my hand. Yeah. But can your co angler do it? You know, and yep. and are they seeing what you're seeing, and, and are you just mm-hmm. kind of hurting yourself by just having one active rod and then a kind of a guy just blind cast it out there yeah. versus putting four rods out mm-hmm. and covering water that you, and it works because it's eerie yep. you can all four of those well, painter boards right we're gonna run some offshore boards and they all get buried and boom yep. there's 35 pounds yeah <laughs> you know yeah and there is, I, I, I pulled boards a couple of times out there when we did go and 
it's fun. I will admit, like just sitting there and all of a sudden one just gets sunk. And you're like, oh yeah. It's a big boy bobber. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely have some, some sheephead and everything else out there. Some big catfish. So it'll be fun. It'll be good to get back to Erie. Uh, it's definitely a big fish fishery, but at Sakakawea is going to be awesome. If you've never been there, you'll love it. It's a beautiful place. Um, moose. Uh, every time I've been up there, I've seen a moose. Sure. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, they're, if you've never seen one, they're absolutely massive. The biggest wild animal <laughs> in my life. They look like just they're bigger than horses. They're huge. Yeah. Um, Red Wing, I, I don't live far from there and near to you, but I haven't been there. Um, it's a river. Looking forward to it. I did hear some news last night uh, from another angler who talked to Jeff Kelm, our tournament director, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it's sounding like there's uh, – we'll, maybe we'll get Jeff on here to clear this stuff up. And, and I haven't seen the fact sheets come out yet on the uh, page for tournaments. But mm-hmm. sounding like Red Wing is going to be – so we're doing is kind of like South Dakota and that pool three through eight is one over 20 inches while I sauger and a limit of four. Um, but you can party fish and you can coal and you can use two rods on the river. that are not one like most of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much just like fish in South Dakota. However, all of Wisconsin waters will be off limits. Okay. So if you look at the map, that's a good half, if not more of that system, because Wisconsin, you can't party fish. We'd basically be in a situation like we had at Bagel, right? Wisconsin's a three fish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. per person, Mm -hmm. and you can't party fish. So there's no handing the rod off. Sounded like Jeff couldn't get that in writing from Mm -hmm. the DNR over there. Mm -hmm. And so, which to his credit is exactly what all the pros ask. If you got to make things more stricter on us to eliminate the gray area, do it. And it sounds like that's what they're going to do is just say, forget Mm -hmm. it. You're not going to go to, you know, you're not going to go to Wisconsin, Lake Erie, Canada. Mm -hmm off limits mm-hmm. i can mm-hmm. almost assure you that canada will be off limits forever here on out because mm-hmm. it's we just don't yeah. need it's not the international walleye tour so yeah. it's fine yeah. it's okay yeah. <laughs> and then uh and then going to green bay could very well just be a three fish tournament hmm. yeah no party fishing yeah three fish limit too much of a gray area you know did the guy catch it or you handing off blah 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 type stuff mm-hmm. uh Theoretically, I mean, I know I did it at, at Devils at our championship. I caught my, there's five there, right? Five fish? Yeah, five fish each. Yeah, five fish limit. Each yeah. bringing in eight or seven, I can't remember. I think we brought in seven, but it's five man limit. Whatever case was, I caught my four or five, and at maybe it was noon, and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm done. I was like, go yeah. up to where I'm at on the boat and do this. Mm-hmm. And my co popped one and it was a decent one. I said, we, we still got like three and a half hours Threw yeah. it back. Five minutes later, he got like a 24, 25 inch. I'm like, yeah. looks good. Let's go. Good. I think that was about, actually you came over and you weren't too far from me about, about that time. I think I was sitting down mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. when you came over and fished those yeah. uh, shallow weed bite there. So yeah. uh, looking forward to, it. it's going to be a good season. 2023 was a good, was a good year. Awesome job. You had a great year. Uh, if anybody yeah. even doubts it, just, Look behind Tom's head. His wall shows it. This it's this isn't luck. This is coming out of skill and and, and learning it, you know, and 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 doing it the hard way. No one's showing you, you know, you're not growing up in a fishing family necessarily and taking you out. And I kind of went down the same road and I got my first boat at like 30. I was borrowing a buddy's boat. Um, mm-hmm. you know, that just pulled it out of his barn and cleaned it up and fixed it up. And to the point where he's like, Hey, my boat's pretty nice now. <laughs> you know, and he started using it, you know, and now he has bought himself a nice new lawn and, and loves it. Um, so, you know, you touched on, you know, your businesses, you, you went to college up in Minnesota, mm-hmm. polished nail spa. Is that what we're talking about? Is that Tom's mm-hmm. companies? Yep. How it many is. of these you got? I want to know about doing nails. Yeah, dude, I've got uh, two of them. And uh, so, um, yeah, we got, let's see, 24. 24 nail techs now Jeez. and um just trying to keep keep everybody busy these winter months are a little bit slow just like oh. always but then once april may rolls around it's it gets pretty crazy for the rest you know through the summer and fall but yeah it's like uh something that if you had asked me when i was a kid you know or in college even just if you could be doing fingernails i thought you're crazy but yeah here i am and literally like that's another thing too i tell people is like you know you don't don't ever like put anything down until you try it. Like honestly, because yeah. I literally I tried it and I'm like, 
you know what? I, I like it. It's like super detailed, number one. Yep. And that also translates to fishing a little bit. Yep. And the detail, the um, just the satisfaction of when it's done, when we see like your finished work is it's good and it, you compare it to your competitors and it's better. And, you know, that part is, uh, is always good. And, you know, just one thing last winter, um, I got three messages on social media, uh, private messages from a lot of you, a lot of my, uh, co, you know, uh, competitors out there on the NWT and aim sent me three of um, sent me pictures. One was of their son, probably four or five years old, on an iPad or some a pad of some sort. And they had there's like a manicure app, and they he was playing. With them. <laughs> Another one was one of the competitors polishing his daughter's nails, and one was his son polishing his mom's nails. Little little boy, and so. Just at first, you know, I thought, oh, that's that's cool. But then I started think, thinking about it. I'm like, this is really cool because that is. just a, just literally, man, like a couple of years ago, none of those guys would have shared that with anybody. <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no. And then now it's like, oh, well, you know, Tom does it. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can let him do this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hey, so, Tom's making nails cool again, man. He's making <laughs> Make the pedicures cool again. Yeah, but the manicures. Uh, yeah, speaking of pedicures, I've had a quite. I've had a handful of you now come in actually to the salons here in Fargo, and uh, get pedicures for the first time, whether it's by by themselves or with their wives or girlfriends. And now the regulars, like they're like you know getting their feet done and stuff, and they're like, it's like a. It's becoming like a a, a thing. <laughs> hey, you know, some of these fishermen have got some pretty gnarly feet, and we spent a lot of time wearing flip flops. So, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I would highly recommend looking up some Paul Schnell's ball in your <laughs> local area and taking yeah, care of them, sure. uh, taking care of them toes, guys, because uh, <laughs> they ain't good. Yeah, we I have some really good nail artists too. They can do uh, fire tiger print. They can do you know any whatever you know your favorite bait color is. You know, they can probably match it. Yeah, toes. and why not get some purple dessin on the fingernails, right? I mean, this is yeah, exactly. you're on to something, man. It's you know, yeah. are you, do you paint lures too? Because all this is detail, and I mean, obviously, with the nails, that's patience, that's meticulous, yeah, so, patient work. Before I uh started in with like Northland and stuff, I would I, like literally, there's there's things that I can do with our gel polishes, yeah, and our chrome pigments on baits that can't be replicated in the fishing industry and it's some of the things that i've used and that we are implement implementing um uh soon we're going to start looking at implementing some of that with northland to have it act to have something like stay on these base so it's a different product so right. no product to that is a different product so if we can combine the two and figure out how to get these looks, like it's, it's going to be something special. We just have to get it nailed, you know, like nailed. Yeah. But we have to get it. <laughs> but intended. <laughs> got to get that nailed down. So there's Tom's yeah. big secret folks. It's using nail polish, but he's got access to the highest <laughs> NASA created nail polish that nobody else does. And he's painting his bait. So, I mean, I keep, I have a little, whatever, a little plano box in my boat and it's full of nail polish. Mm -hmm. Oranges yeah. and reds and greens. If I got to put that orange belly stuff works, doesn't stay on very long. I'm not coating it. I'm just slapping that thing on there real quick. It is not pretty. I'm not winning any awards and nobody wants to go around showing it off. Probably. I've yeah, had cleanups go kind of look at the bait. Like I'm like, yeah, I made that last night. It, it'll, it'll be fine. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And, the, you know? and the, the, the polish that I'm using too is, you know, there's no scent, there's no fumes, uh -huh. there's nothing. So it's like a, just a neutral, there's no, potential deterrent for like if a fish you know gets a hint of that or something and it scares spooks and who knows but right yeah so it's pretty cool just trying to translate that into the fishing world and it could be something special so we'll see that is that is super cool what uh no kids you tom single mm -hmm. out there what's up yep. tom's got these nail slots yep. successful angler ladies 
<laughs> I mean, I'm thinking lifetime supply of manicures. What uh, what's going on? Hit him up. Get slide into this dude's DMs, ladies. Get no, I familiar. I've got myself a lady. I just I'm not, but no kids. Uh, I'm not looking for any other ladies. That's you know, one's enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no kids. So that's also a reason I'm able to do this fishing thing the way I am and put the time into it um and also just you know with the businesses so doing running yep. doing both and um i do have to say it at the nail salons i do have like the best management there is i mean some of these nail techs have been with me for over 12 years some of them 12 to 16 years now and so that's rare these days and so i'm very fortunate with that but well, that says a lot of, a lot about you and your in a team whether you travel the team but most importantly is your is your is your team back home whether it's you know whether you're married or not or got kids if it's your friends or even your folks or in your case mm -hmm. employees and having those key employee that can just take care of stuff so you can focus on fishing and your phone's mm -hmm. not going off you're not getting text messages every 10 minutes mm -hmm. about problems mm -hmm. and it's just handling you don't have to worry about it that's huge that yeah. takes yeah. i mean cuz you, practice is practice and you really got to focus on a lot of us that have businesses and companies and, and kids and things it's inevitable as soon as you leave something's got to happen at home and something mower breaks down whatever it is and my yeah. life has overcome all those hurdles and and has it figured out and is, and is awesome about taking care of those things but i know for guys that are just getting into it it, it takes a while for you know your spouse whoever to kind of figure that out um you know when mm -hmm. you know someone's not responding to me to spend 10 minutes yeah i'm not looking Okay, I yeah. love tournament days because I turn my phone off and throw it in a glove box. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I turn it on when I'm when I'm done. You, we don't need to have mm -hmm. phones out, and they shouldn't be used unless you're in case of emergency. So yep. I'm like, I just I can't wait. You know, before that national yeah. anthem goes off, I'll throw a video up, power down, mm -hmm. throw in a glove box. You know, unless yeah. we're trolling, I need my precision trolling data app or something like that out. Uh, yep. You know, it, it's it's quiet and it's great. So, mm -hmm. but that says a lot about you, Tom, as as the boss, the owner of these stores. You got employees that have stuck around that long. It's tough to find good help nowadays mm -hmm. and to keep them there. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing something right. So, yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate them. It lets us do what, what we do. And like you said, tournament days, I, I can just let them, they, they know when I'm on the water and, uh, they don't, nobody, nobody bugs me. So <laughs> no. And you know, whatever the problem is, it's, it's not the end of the world. It can wait. I will yep. get to it this evening when I get off. Yep. It's, this is had, this is my I've time. I've never had an issue where they couldn't they they couldn't get together and work, work it out. So certainly. right, and that's and that's good because it forces them to figure things out. It forces yep. some of those people to step up. Yep. Um, that's just that's just yeah. good business. So forward facing sonar, obviously, you're the man. You've made several appearances on the Next Bite Show and Chase how to run that thing. Right, mm -hmm. it's, it's done. I think you just did one with him and, and no, Kinger. I don't think they can teach him anything, no. <laughs> no, he's, he's sharp. He knows his stuff. He's running the. You're on the Garmin side. I think Chase is running the Laurent stuff. Um, yeah. Yep. What you see much difference in the three? I'm a hummingbird guy. Um, yeah. I've had. I've been fortunate enough to uh, be in the boat with all three. Um, and yes, there is a difference. Um, I have all. I've run Garmin since the beginning with uh live scope and um i did have an opportunity to go to another company uh to have and have everything you know just here's all your stuff for the year type right. thing. i had that opportunity and i turned it down and just still elected to pay for my garment stuff um a lot of people have assumed i've been like a partner with garment since the beginning I just had a conversation. My first conversation with them was this year. So it's like, um, I have always paid for my electronics and stuff like that. But um, Garmin right now still does have a leg up on forward facing sonar. Um, and just the, the, the way I can now, like on Winneb on the Winnebago system, for example, this year I really dialed in the species. So like on the Winnebago system, I would see 500 to 1,000 fish before I cast it at a walleye. 
like because I go through there, drum, uh, lots of drum, uh, white bass, white bass, and white bass, and uh, oh well, just a bunch of trash fish, right? So I'm going through, panning around, looking, and just like waiting to see that mark, that one mark. And people think walleyes are schooling fish all the time. They're like, I never saw them schooled out there. It was just one fish, one walleye sitting there. And it was such shallow water where, you know, we were told before you can't live scope in that shallow water. But I figured out my settings. I just did some stuff and then just going around and like casting at everything, seeing what each mark looked like. And I finally narrowed it, got it down. And NWT has a video of, uh, they had a camera boat in there and, um, like literally, I was able to call it like I would be going around scanning and I'd be like, there's one bang and I catch it. And I I didn't, I caught just enough fish each day that in Winnebago, like I didn't, I wasn't throwing back fish at all. Like I um, caught, you know, just enough to go in and weigh in. And, um, but with that lot with, I can, I can see what species they are, how each fish, act when they're sitting stationary how they act when they're swimming and uh, i can dictate size better with the garmin and it is next to instantaneous um processing um whereas i've seen some delay in the others which i think has been fixed a little bit uh in both the other brands but um i Still, like for for a while, I was going to use the best that I could for for facing sonar, and Garmin was it. Now, Lawrence has, you know, really, you know, they still have their, you know, if you're in Lake Erie doing the high speed scanning, they're two D. They're two D. It's good. Um, your hummingbird home, side images, side images, phenomenal. So everybody has their strengths, and my preference for for facing right now is Garmin for. Just the fact that you pull it out of the box, you set it up, and just with the factory settings, you're really close to where you need to be already. Yeah, I've seen them as well, all of them, and I run the birds, but I remember, you know, I talked to you and, and Hoyer both up at Devil's Lake, and you guys are casting weeds, and I'm like, yeah, I'm catching weeds, and I'm caught, you know, I think my biggest on day one was a 25-inch out of there, but I can't see them. I don't, mm-hmm. I just, I just know there's fish there. I'm looking at mm-hmm. my side image more than I am my, my, you know, my, uh, mega right. live in that case. And you guys are like, Oh no, we see them. I know how big <laughs> they are. I know what they are. I'm like, I don't, I just know there's weeds over there, yeah. man. That's it. And yeah. I'm, and I'm just yeah. working it and just keep moving and, and just working it like you used to when you didn't know, you know, yeah, and, it, and it worked. I got, I mean, I got fish. Not very. Um, yeah. the bird doesn't get out too far. I put it like, 50 to 70 somewhere in there Mm -hmm. i can't see my jig very far out at all but it's really just a confidence thing Mm -hmm. personally it'd be awesome to be able to see the jig and the fish but if i could see one i prefer to all right there's a fish i throw and then i'm scanning looking for my next cast while i'm working that back Mm -hmm. okay i don't i don't need to watch it eat it um Mm -hmm. now if i'm working a little deeper vertical you can work it and see how that fish is reacting and acting and maybe you need to switch up but when you know they're active you just need to find the fish yeah. get your cash and, and then the, start yeah. looking and that, that's the biggest thing too like you, you know we we can see thing obviously with forward facing sonar we can see all these things but it doesn't mean number one it's a walleye number two it doesn't mean that walleye's going to bite and <laughs> um it's just learning fi- the behavior so if you cast yep. it, if i cast it a fish if it swims away whether it's from being spooked or whatever to be able to know the way it swam away, what kind of fish it is, that's like what I'm talking about with like getting detailed with, you know, Garmin. Like, okay, I'm not going to chase that fish because it's not a walleye. Or it looked big, but when it turned, it's not big enough. I'm not going to go after it. So um, that's where the advantage is in tournament fishing anyway can come in. And when you're fishing for... And in tournaments, I, I'm not I'm not looking for the schools. Um, right. If I see a school, I'm I I leave, and I'm looking for a singular fish or sometimes pairs. Um, yeah, like a big typically cluster. those 
bigger fish aren't in a big pot of fish. When you got 15, yeah. 20 of them, you're going to have a lot of those, those little smaller walleyes. And, you know, unless it's a school of white bass where they can all be huge, yeah. but that doesn't do us a lot of good. Now, the Devil's Lake, I was searching for a white bass. I think maybe you were too, because if you know much about white bass, walleye are there as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty, pretty good identifier of where they're at because those things will tell you where all the bait is real quick. So mm -hmm. it is huge. just come a long ways, but you're fishing clean. You're fishing efficient. You're not wasting cast. I mean, you're, you're moving more. It's, it's, it's just changed the game. Period. So, like I said, tournament fishing is more mental, even you know, physical aspect nowadays. You don't see mm -hmm. a lot of you know bigger, heavy set bass guys because you're standing all day. So whether right. you know you have back problems or whatever cases, you're burning a lot of calories. It's a lot of stress. You know, I mean, I, I stretch in the mornings for tournament, mm -hmm. not enough, but yeah. you really got to have a little bit. Of, you know, got to be a little limber. You got to be able to you know withstand some of this, not just the boat ride. But, you know, we're all going to have hunchbacks and yeah. neck problems, <laughs> right, with yep. this forward-facing sonar. But where do you think the future of this is going? Um, Bass World's got tons of talk about it. They want to ban it. Some do, some don't. Uh, not a, so much discussion in the Wild World not even everybody's on board with it yet. Um, yeah. I imagine you'll see a lot more of, more and more of that this year. It's completely evolving. It works. Yeah. Last year was a huge testament to how well it works. What, what are yeah. your thoughts? Yeah. It just uh, comes down to responsibility is what it is. So, like, a lot of it is, you know, number one, people are – there's there's a lot of people who are concerned with the fisheries because of forward-facing sonar and the limits and stuff like that. But, um, you know, every all, – all of the facts and all the studies, they start down south typically because of bass and stuff like that and the longer seasons that these game and fishes right. can study them. So, there was actually a study coming out of – actually my home state one of the first studies that came out on forward facing sonar my home state of arkansas just came out with some statistics on the bass fishery because it's very pressured for bass down there in forward facing sonar but there's been no change like in uh the use of forward facing sonar the bass population or the quality of uh bass that the arkansas game and fish are seeing so it's it's um, that was one of the first studies to just have come out this last fall and to, and I think more is going to follow. Um, and it just, and, and as far as like banning the new technology, um, I, I remember hearing stories of, you know, uh, people calling for the banning of side scan and down scan mm -hmm. technology and stuff like that. Oh, it shouldn't be able to be used in tournaments, but. I, I I don't know. Like I think if I was able to take one of these people who are totally against it out, teach them how to use it, show them what it is. I don't. I and and, and it's also the ones that are calling it boring. Like oh, I don't want to sit and watch somebody fish on live scope all day. I don't see how they think it's boring. Like I, I, I really don't. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I get their perspective. They're, you know, that's live coverage. Your face is down, and you're, and you're making, like you yeah. said, five hundred to a thousand fish where you made a cast. So there's yeah. nothing for them to see. But they're if they could see what you were seeing, yeah, wouldn't be so yeah, boring, that's what right? I mean, that's what I mean. And, and and so and a lot of it is people. You know, a lot of a lot of anglers are. Uh, when I say older, I'm talking about like. They're they're over technology already, you know. Like, yeah, people my age really, they're like, I don't want anything new anymore. I don't, I'm not going to learn it. So, I think it's my. This, this is my opinion. I believe that if they were able to learn it, put it the time to learn it, and understand it, use it responsibly, it would change change some people's minds. And and who knows? Let's just say that it does. Like tournaments start to ban it. Then what in another tournament series just pop up that does all live scope? You know what I mean? So uh, it, I don't think there's a any side that's going to – I think things are just going to progress the way they are. And, um, yeah, you can't just keep banning new technology, but you just have to keep people responsible. Yeah, I think responsibility is, is the key. Obviously, a bass is more of a catch and release type fish. So you're not going to affect the numbers. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot, you know, walleye. A lot of people are obviously keeping a walleye. Yeah. Tastes great. Mm -hmm. Ice fishing is where it's really, you know, whooping and 
a mm-hmm. lot of that Minnesota stuff wiping out some populations of crappie and what mm-hmm. have you. But trust your DNR, trust these scientists. The numbers don't lie. These guys are out there doing the research, doing the, you know, the net surveys. Obviously, when yeah. they see numbers drop, you yeah. know, and then they'll they'll That's make okay. the you know the changes and the requirements. Until then, it it is whether you want to get on board with it or don't get on board with it. It's completely yeah. your option until yeah. you're told otherwise. Yeah, exactly. So when they say, you know, we just have to, we just have to trust them, like you said. And if they ever say like this lake, you can't use it, or if you, the statewide, you can't use it, that it is what it is. But then yep. tournaments are totally a separate entity at that point. You know, it were, you know, like, uh, why couldn't you still use it in tournaments? You know, I mean, it's just, it, we're catching them, we're releasing them. Um, right. So there's a lot that goes in and out of that. And I, I don't know if, like, I try to see both sides, but I just, I've seen so many people who are frustrated. I get messages all the time. I get messages oh, every yeah. day. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, they're frustrated with it. They can't see this. They can't see that. Then I point them in the right direction, show them, and they're like, oh, okay, okay. Or if I had co-anglers to get into the boat. Yeah. They're like, I, like, I bought this live scope, and I, I took it off and threw it in my garage. And I'm like, well, here. Just so that it's a big learning curve for the co-anglers and they, I, I mirror, they can stand by me or they, I can mirror my live scope screen at my dash and they, they watch it. Oh, and they can like, see. Yeah. And I, and I'm fine with them watching that and asking questions. And then after that, they're like, Oh, okay. Okay. You know, they, so what I think a lot of it is people get these electronics, uh, no matter what brand they get them, they want to clear. So I think a lot of the haters for live scope, or forward facing sonar, I think a lot of the haters have it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think they, I think they own own it. They just don't use it because they can't learn it. And I think a lot of it is people get it out of the package, they put it on, put it on their screen, and they try so hard to clear up that screen to make it look like movie quality black yep. black background. They want to see an actual fish swimming around. And so they're, and with using all of the built-in functions on these screens, you're overworking the processor in the unit. And when you're doing that, you're getting a big lag, you're getting a big delay, you're missing fish as you're sweeping across. You might sweep across, and there, there's a fish already you passed, but you're not going to see it. So you're like, okay, where did that go? You know, so there's a lot of YouTube videos out there showing like how to clean your screen up and all that. And they get so many millions of thousands of views, and it's like it. I just no, that it's it's wrong. It's all it's like you can clean it up, but you're not going to see anything, you know. And so uh, that I think where people get frustrated because they're just not letting the electronics work for them the way they're supposed to work. They want to see what they want to see and envision before they see it. So no. And you still got to get, you still got to catch them. You still got to yeah. get them to bite just because you yeah. can see them. I, I look at it as a huge confidence thing. I can see fish. That's not a fish. It's a rock or that yeah. rock just moved. It is a fish. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to work this little area. I always have said it a hundred times. You can master your electronics. You'll be a master angler. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. People out of the box, put them in their boat, turn it on. Well, this isn't what it looked like in my buddy's boat, or this isn't what the YouTube video, you know, yep. they have no idea about all the settings and it's, and they're so advanced and there's new ones coming out each year. It's such a revolving, mm-hmm. it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And you just said it, you spent a ton of time. And I was, you know, my goals last year, I went to lakes where I'm guiding or I had a day off. And I was like, I'm just, that's it. Throwing the rod, draw the boat. I'm going to go. I know where a couple of rock piles are and that's it. I'm just going to play with the forward facing sonar with different mm-hmm. jigs, different lures, different presentations and, and mess with the comb, moving with different angles, trying to see where that is best. And then, you know, and, like anything you got better now at devil's lake last year it was a very target rich environment i went in with the complete goal of if i want to compete with these guys i better stick my head to my screen mm-hmm. did it and and, yep. it, and it worked did it and i yep. started i'm like oh you know i text whoever i got one it worked i, I called it i saw it bam 25 <laughs> incher you know now yeah. at the turbot time i i didn't depend on it quite as much but I, it was still there i mean i was on it and i'm like oh yeah look at there's there's a lot of fish there and they were nice fish so yep. It it is awesome. It's an awesome tool. Um, I, I don't I don't think it's going anywhere in our world anytime soon. No. Anyway. And, and one more thing on the forward face sonar. I know we're getting to our time here, but 
Um, so me being relatively new, I've gotten a lot of perspective from the angler, like, like hardcore weekend fishermen or, you know, like I, I, where Nate and I had a camper up by, on Leech. So uh, there's a lot of fishermen up there and they would always be like, oh, Leech Lake is dying. You know, they're, everybody be like, there, there's no walleyes left. They're gone. There's just nothing left here and stuff like that. And as I'm learning live scope, I'm like, Dude, I'm seeing thousands every single day. <laughs> and, um, and I'd be, I'd, there, there's a couple of kids over there that I took fishing and um, their family would have fish fries. So I let them keep their uh, limits and would come in and the, uh, all these, all these, you know, guys who've been fishing leech for years who are saying that, you know, side scan and all that has killed the lake is <laughs> they're like, what is going, you know, like they, they just couldn't believe it. So it, it's not that again, it's, it's not going to be life scope that kills a lake. It's going to be us. <laughs> it's going right. to be people, you know what I mean? So like if, if you're using it in, uh, irresponsibly, then, you know, shame on you. I mean, you, but like, you keep what you're going to use and uh, keep what you're going to eat. What I mean, and just that's it. I mean, there's no reason to, you know, overflow your freezers and stuff like that. Just use it responsibly. Yep. Basic principles of cons- conservation. It, it's yep. pretty simple. If you're not going to eat it, don't take it. Yep. So, I mean, there's plenty of meat fishermen out there that just catch and kill everything. And I guarantee you a lot of that just goes to waste. It goes to the freezer, mm-hmm. it's freezer burnt. And they go, oh man, I got this stuff two years later and it gets tossed out. So, yep. you know, if you're going to eat it, I don't even keep any unless I'm going to eat it, mm-hmm. you know, fairly soon. If, you know, within a couple of days now, because I, as a, mm-hmm. as a guy to get plenty of uh, guys that just don't want to keep them or something, I'm like, I don't, I don't want them. Mm-hmm. Cause not, you know, unless... I catch them or I know, and I really will probably keep some ice fishing because they just taste really good coming out of that super yeah. cold water. Yeah. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're getting close to wrapping up here. I got a couple more things for you, Tom. I could talk all day. You, you just triggered so many, so many yeah. thoughts, oh, you know, <laughs> and uh, which is good because, you know, we'll have you on again and, and we'll, we'll keep this conversation going, but mm-hmm. let's just talk about how, how is Tom, how have you evolved as a professional angler? Well, it's been a short <laughs> three years. It's, but, yeah, you've come up very fast. Yeah, I mean, so it's been very fast. And like I said, I have to stop sometimes and just remember that and appreciate every single step. But from the beginning of uh, walleye angling, just, you know, being literally the, those first few tournaments, I was the only one standing on the bow of the boat. Like I was it. And um, then to now seeing. 80, 90% of us standing up. That part's pretty cool to see. Um, but as far as, you know, me, I, I fell into the trap of thinking that I'm 40 some years old. I, there's no way I'm going to get a sponsor. So I'm just going to do this on my own. And just, you know, things just started happening, you know, and um, more people notice than what you think so like my social media always watching yeah so my social media was small and you know i'm thinking there's no i don't even know how to grow it that's what i tell myself i don't know how to grow it (laughs) so people you know so i'm like these you know nobody's going to sponsor me because it's i have a small following compared to you know i'd look up a lot of the guys i'm like thousands tens of thousands of followers i'm like yeah i'm too far behind but with you know, just realizing now that more people are watching it, whether it's sponsors, whether it's kids, you know, or people that are, that look to up, up to us that could be older than us that are wanting to do this. Um, but the tackle companies like, like Northland, when they, I kept talking about, on some of my videos about, you know, this little jig and it was like a, still to this day, nobody knows what jig I was using before Northland <laughs> came along. But I found a jig online that you know, it was hard to find. The only one place I could order it. And um, people saw it uh, on the championship in Otter, on Otter Tail. Uh, I held it up to the camera and I said, people want to know what Tom's favorite color. And I held it up and I said, lead. And so. <laughs> I um, agree. Yeah. So with Northland, just paying attention to, they actually 
we, we, we made a jig, which was a short shank, wider gap, and, and tungsten, tungsten instead of lead. And Love it. And it, you, you don't think, like, I, I never thought there's so much behind a jig, but my goodness, is there. Like, it, it is the perfect jig from the, the gap of the hook to how it falls with that tungsten. Like, everything about it when, when we first put it to use was like, I wasn't getting skin hooks anymore. Like it was like buried in the bone and with those mustad hooks in there too, they're solid. I mean, they're, they're not bending on those hooks yet. So nope. just being able now to throw my two cents in, whether it's Northland or Daiwa now, I mean, that was the, the whole Daiwa opportunity was due to, was it last winter? No. Last winter, two winters ago, two winters ago, I did a, a video of me rigging up for the year before the NWT. I did a um, just a short little clip of me winding some line. And in the background, I had uh, like 10 Shields exclusive Daiwa reels. So um, I'm not sponsored by Shields, but they they're that Daiwa makes a real specific leaf for shields, a $90 reel. And I'd used it that season before. I used one. I really liked it. So I bought 10 and had boxes of them back there. And then I wasn't even like highlighting that at all. And I started getting messages from followers like, oh, you like those Daiwa reels? I'm like, yeah, they're 90 bucks at shields. Before I knew it, a couple of weeks later, I started getting messages still. And they're like, oh, shields are sold out. I'm like, really? And they go online. Like, no, they're sold out online. <laughs> like, oh. they're, they're all gone, man. And then so that is where, like, I I think got maybe the, the attention of the local Daiwa reps in the Midwest. And then I was, you know, given the opportunity to run the reels and equipment last year. And then now to be able to give them my input on how I want the rods and line and everything like that, especially tar, you know, specifically for fishing um, with forward facing sonar. Um, it is, it's awesome to be able to have a company that will listen and do that. And, you know, what I learned about Daiwa just recently is that um, they are the biggest, company that has their actually actual own um rod factory so they so like a lot of the bigger companies have really good rods everybody ha there's so many good rods out there right now but daiwa actually builds their own own from from scratch they they have everything from start to finish is a daiwa rod and so um these new they're called TDI Team Daiwa I rods that um, will be released um, this week. Uh, no, wait, in two weeks at the Chicago Land Show, and then I'm going to go do an unveiling at the Wisconsin Fishing Expo in Madison. I think like the third week of February, um, and do a couple seminars um, out there uh, for Daiwa. So. Um, I'm excited for them. The price point, you know, you think Daiwa, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not going to be able to afford that. Um, 129 bucks. Uh, we kept the price where um, it's very affordable for us tournament anglers and for the weekend anglers. And to be able to have that quality at that price is kind of rare these <laughs> these days. Yeah, nothing's so, cheap anymore. So no, so I'm glad I was I'm able to be a part of that. So as far as my evolution as a tournament angler, just it's been quick. Um, but I don't take any of it for granted. I, I remember always got to remember where we came from and, you know, my dad risked a lot trying when he came to this country and, uh, and uh, to be able to, um, for him to see me like do it fishing professionally and successfully is like something I guarantee he never even would have dreamt of. You know, like yeah. somebody's able to do this and uh, make a living doing this. This is insane. 
true American dream. Yep. 100%. I can't even imagine meeting your, your dad's position nowadays with yeah. society. The world we're in, I just, I mean, as ballsy. Yeah. That takes a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you put a lot of it on the line, and yeah. and that's that's yeah. that super cool. That's awesome to hear that you, you got to help with the development of these new rods. I just read it now, and the fish more the other day, those are coming out. Mm-hmm. We got forward-facing. I mean, look at this. You're designing a rod to help, you know, specifically for targeting fish, you know, individual fish. Mm-hmm. forward face sonar. We have Berkeley just released the finisher, the credge, and the, and the power switch come out. These baits are designed for forward-facing sonar, yeah. right? <laughs> You're talking about that tungsten jig. Tungsten shows mm-hmm. up so much better on forward-facing sonar mm-hmm. than lead. So if you didn't know that, folks, yeah, tungsten yep. ain't cheap. But you can see it a heck of a lot better a little bit further mm-hmm. out. And that is a hell of a jig. I love that jig. Is, I'm pretty sure it's it tied up to several rods in my garage right now. <laughs> you know, if there's one bait I could ever use, and I'm sure you're the same boat, it's a jig. Exactly. Period. Yep. Yep. So, because I can catch anything, whether it's a plastic or a crawler or a yep. minnow on it, you can put it wherever you can fish it deep, shallow, fast, slow. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really, right. you know, ultimately all you need. So, we wrap this up, Tom. What is one thing? You can leave with our listeners a tidbit, a nugget to help them on their angling journey. Putting you on the spot. Um, just put the time in uh, on the water. Um, if you and one thing is to like, don't be afraid to reach out to us as you know tournament professionals. Don't don't be afraid, especially me. I can say it. Like if you if somebody has a question or anything like that, I'm available. I answer I answer my any questions, any requests anybody has of me like that. But um, just, you know, if you're looking into fishing tournaments, um, my advice is try it. Try the coiling side. Do that. Don't don't put it off. Um, if you have the means to do it, do it. Um, if you're looking to catch more fish just as a, um everyday angler, um, put those electronics to use. Um, Everything we learned and read about in magazines um, on traditional walleye fishing, there's it's a those are places to start. But you soon learn that walleyes are much different than what you thought they were, and act way different than what we thought. Uh, I always tell people I've never seen a walleye read the Walleye Insider magazine. Yeah. So even though right. he's supposed to be there doing this, doesn't mean he is. But yeah. like you said, it's a great place to start and get involved with your local clubs. You don't have to fish the NWT as a co-angler to fish any tournament. I mean, a tournament yeah. makes you a better angler outside of tournaments, period. Because you're going to learn. Does. You're going to learn from failures. You're going to learn by seeing what other people maybe were fishing 10 feet away from you the entire day and mm-hmm. won, and you brought in one fish. Yep. But afterwards, you're going to be like, ah, oh, but this is, they were doing this or that or super slow or super fast, super aggressive, or I was just off the mark because I was on top of the ledge, he was on the ledge, whatever the case may be. You know, the lessons learned by losing yep. in a sense yep. are, are yep. priceless as well. And I've, mm-hmm. we all know we've all got plenty of those and they yep. always sit in the our bed and yeah. they come forward, you know, many yep. times. So mm-hmm. awesome, awesome stuff. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate your time. Thank you all for listening in. It was a, Tom's got a great story, great advice. We're going to, this forward facing sonar topic is going to go on forever. We're always going to talk about it. We're going to ask everybody's opinions about it. But keep following along to hear more and subscribe down below for some more real talk fishing with no limits. As Tom put it out there, there is there's the only limit is the one you're going to eat. So <laughs> if it's past that, don't take it home. So thanks for listening and tuning in, folks. And until next time, we'll see you on the water.